Lilies and Lilacs, Episode 12, Shackled to the Past. And with five, I win again. Thank you, ladies, gentlemen, and travelers. The three adventurers at the table threw their cards down and cursed under their breaths. Zeddy reached forward and slid the pile of gold toward her. You all want to play again? <laughs> Actually, you're too good at this game. And we really should save what we have for the next trip. Yeah, good game, though. Yes, it was a good game. Safe travels. The adventurers rose from the table and left Zeddy alone to count her winnings. A wide smile creased Zeddy's face as she stacked the coins into tiny little towers. Most of the time when Zeddy gambled, she had either small winnings or significant losses. Today's winnings were a grand sum of 26 golden coins. Not bad at all. Zeddy scooped up the coins and placed them in her coin pouch. For just a moment, she glanced around the room. Morden was delivering drinks and food to tables on the far side. As usual, women were trying to snag his attention and attraction. Bach was behind the bar, listening to a patron tell a story. Much like Zeddy, Bach had walked away from the adventurer life, and now found herself here. She was a great addition to the team, for sure. As always, Tessica was moving from behind the bar to the tables, greeting guests, and even checking in with good old Vonrad, who was at his usual perch. All in all, this was a pretty nice place. It was a nice place to laugh, to live, and also to forget. A man was staring at her from the entryway of the tavern, and as soon as Zeddy noticed him, their eyes locked. A greasy and foul eel swirled in Zeddy's stomach. The man was about six foot two inches, with a lanky build, a short brown hairstyle, and a lush beard to match. He was dressed in common traveling clothes, but he had a small dagger at his side. His eyes were bright green, the same eyes as Dazel's. Zeddy glanced away from him. Maybe she was wrong. Maybe it wasn't him. Zeddy! Zeddy Jackson! You are the adventurer Zeddy, aren't you? Zeddy grimaced as she slowly turned back around to look at the man, Diesel Grant, who now approached her table. Her body froze, and icy needles stabbed into her lungs. Diesel snarled at her. Of all the people I could have run into today, why did one of them have to be you? It was all your fault! He started to approach her closer, but Tessica leapt in front of him. It certainly surprised Diesel because he stared down at her. Tessica poked him in the chest. Hey, buddy. I don't care who you are. You're not going to talk to her that way here. Mind your own business! This is my business. I own this tavern. Zeddy is my friend. And she works with me to keep this place safe. So I'm not going to tell you again. You're not going to talk to her like that here. Bach rounded the bar and stood just right of Tessica. Her arms were crossed over her chest. Even without her adventurer armor, she gave off a fierce presence. But you don't understand. She got my sister killed! Diesel gestured towards Zeddy as tears rimmed his eyes. She didn't even have the decency to stay for the funeral. She was the only one to live. It should have been my sister. Tessica punched Diesel hard in the jaw, and it made the man stumble back a couple of steps. How dare you! To wish death on someone is absolutely horrible! I'm sorry your sister died, I really am. But Zeddy is a good person. Was your sister an adventurer? Yes, she was. Well then, she knew the risks. Dying is always a possibility. Zeddy survived, but you don't think the deaths of her friends affects her? It does! And you reminding her of those losses is not okay! Leave! And don't ever come back, or you'll have trouble with us! For a long moment, Diesel pouted at the pair before them, before beaming a look at Zeddy. Tears welled in his eyes, much like they did in Zeddy's. He left a moment later. The tears trickled down Zeddy's cheeks as their names boomed in her mind. 
Her gaze went unfocused. Dazel. Hodfrey. Riddell. An arm wrapped around Zeddy's shoulder, and she focused on Tessica, who sat beside her. I'm really sorry about that, jackass. Are you okay? Do you need to take the rest of the day off? I might actually take you up on that. I'm sorry, I just... Uh, don't apologize. Let me know if you need anything. And if you want to talk, I'm here for you. No pressure, okay? Zeddy hugged Tessica and then decided to leave the tavern through the back entrance in the kitchen. The last thing she wanted to do was run into Diesel on the street, so she stuck to the back alleys until she made her way to the next main street over. She crossed to the street and entered another alleyway. Diesel was a merchant, and he wouldn't need to go to the industrial section of Autumn Bliss. Numerous warehouses and manufacturing facilities lined the street, and there wasn't a lot of other traffic here, other than the locals who worked here in these areas. For the most part, Zeddy was alone. As she strolled down the street, she let her mind wander back in time. Adventures? <laughs> You're crazy. Why would we ever do that? That's dangerous. Oh, come on. We used to talk about going off to see the world when we were kids. Zeddy was in a small glade exercising when her best friend, Dazel, came upon her with yet another wild idea. Sweat dripped down Zeddy's face and back, but she reveled in the after feeling of a good workout. Dazel was a woman of average body type, with short brown hair and light green eyes. Today, she wore a pretty lavender-colored robe, a pair of cloth slacks, and a pair of boots. Ever since she got back from the Mage Academy, she had changed her fashion choices to favor her new life's passion. Yeah, we said that when we were kids. <laughs> now things are different. I'm not adventurer material. Oh, what do you mean? You're a black belt in Guangdo, and you're always talking about opening your own school one day. If we did the adventure life for a while, you could afford to do so. I mean, I'm a powerful sorcerer, and you're a dexterous shifty striker. Powerful sorcerer? <laughs> you just graduated! And as for me, fighting barehanded is one thing, but delving into dungeons and fighting scary monsters is another. There's no way I could be a frontline defender. <laughs> well, of course not! You're like the nimble rogue from all the stories. In terms of frontlines, uh, I already have two guys in mind. Zeddy wiped the sweat from her brow and then arched an eyebrow at Dazel. One, those are stories. Two, I'm not a rogue. Rogues are supposed to pick locks and steal, and that's not me. Oh, pish posh, Zeddy. Yes, you're not like that, but while the front line distracts them, you can get them from behind. Dazel began throwing kicks and making silly noises with her mouth. Zeddy grinned. You're serious about this, aren't you? Well, Grandmaster says that traveling helps expand understanding. Who are you wanting for the front lines anyway? Hodfrey and Riddle Matterson. <laughs> they just finished serving four years with the Royal Army. We all used to play together as kids, remember? <laughs> Besides, Riddle likes you. And if you say yes, he will too. Uh. <laughs> and if Riddle is in, Hodfrey will be interested as well. If I say no, you'll just be back tomorrow, won't you? <laughs> of course I will! You are my best friend, after all. Oh, I couldn't do this without you. Zeddy's shoulders slumped, and then she groaned once more. Let's go talk to them. Yay! <laughs> Zeddy sat beneath a tree as the sun began to lower in the sky. That fateful day when she decided to take her first steps. What was that? Six years ago? Tears trickled down her cheeks as she let her eyes go unfocused. I'm sorry, my friends. It is all my fault. She sobbed into her hands. During the weird days when the mist had covered the whole of Autumn Bliss, she had heard them in her room, each floating around her. They didn't yell at her or condemn her. 
They told her they were proud of her, that they missed her, and forgave her. Zeddy felt her heart twist within her. How could they feel that way about her? She caused their deaths. Dazel's words were the most damaging. Please don't continue to blame yourself. You deserve happiness and fulfillment. We love you. Zeddy's insides throbbed as she wiped away her tears. Are you hungry? I brought you some food. Zeddy glanced up to see Tessica standing over her, with a basket of various goodies in it. She wiped her face, and then patted the spot beside her. By now, the sun was starting to set. Tessica pulled out some sandwiches, some cheese, and some wine. How did you find me? Through lots of effort. <laughs> Please, eat. And so, Zeddy ate her sandwich, the entire block of cheese, and sipped on the wine. Tessica just sat there as the sun painted the horizon with oranges and yellows. A small smile was on the younger woman's face. You're a really good friend. Thank you. So are you. I realize you're really upset, and that's totally okay. You have every right to be. I just don't want you to forget how important you are to people. People who are here now, and people who aren't. Zeddy lowered her gaze. It's my fault. They're dead because of me. Why do you think it was your fault? Because I'm the one who suggested that we go on that one last quest. It was going to be our last one, and then we were all going to give up adventuring. If I didn't convince them all to have one more hurrah, then we would have all returned home. Tessica wrapped an arm around Zeddy's shoulder, and instincts took over Zeddy's mind. She fell into her friend and she sobbed a little. Tessica's warm hug enclosed her, which inspired even more tears. It's okay to cry. I'm sure your friends still love you very much. <sighs> I don't know what it's like to be one of you, but I do know it's risky. Did you know your friends were going to die? <laughs> of course not. Then you're not really at fault. All things considered, you and your adventuring party embarked on a quest, determined to succeed. Danger comes along with the thrill. I would love to hear about your friends. Zeddy wiped her face again, and then she sat up straighter. Well, there was Hodfrey Matterson, his cousin Riddell Matterson, and then there was Dazel Grant. Hodfrey was a beefy guy who favored a steel shield and a hammer, but he wore light armor. He was a gentle sword who always made sure the rest of us were protected. <laughs> you know how most groups have a party mom. Well, he was our party dad. Aw, I wish I could have met him. You would have liked him. His cousin Riddell was the total opposite. Riddell was a loud and brash guy who wanted to show the world his might. He and I had a brief off-again, on-again romance over the years. By the end, we were just good friends. He wore heavy armor and used a halberd. While Hodfrey and Riddell fought monsters from the front, I snuck around them and focused on the ranged enemies and mages. And Dazel? Dazel was a sorcerer who focused on enchanting people's minds. Oftentimes, she would confuse enemies to hurt their friends or cast fantastical illusions to misdirect them. <sighs> the four of us. We usually took escort and exploration jobs. So... What was your last mission going to be? For a long moment, they sat there in silence, and Tessica waited. We had gotten a tip that an ancient treasure was hidden in a secret antechamber in the middle of a lush jungle. There was a buyer who wanted an idol within, and so we were hired to go get it. Coincidentally, the long-lost temple was dedicated to that weird goddess that the priestess Salarin worships. I don't like being around her, as every time I see that holy symbol of hers, I feel like the universe is watching me. Anyway, we went to the jungle and eventually found the ruins. It was weird, though. Weird? How so? The doors to the ruin were wide open. There weren't any traps, and no one was guarding it. The floors and walls were covered in art and, well, 
We should have realized why we were sent there. What do you mean? Why were you sent there? We were sent there for a dark purpose. The whole mission was a trap. The walls and floors showed imagery of four people entering the ruin. At first, we thought it was interesting and not at all pertaining to us. We came to the idol room, and there it was. The idol, out in the open, for anyone to take. However, as soon as we touched the idol, these portals opened up and these massive tentacles reached out to try and snag us. A weird voice in my head said something about us becoming avatars. Oh my goddess. Not only that, but all these horrid monsters started coming through the portals. We tried to leave the idol chamber, but several monsters grabbed Hodfrey and... threw him into one of the tentacles. It wrapped around him and pulled him through one of the portals. It closed a moment later. Riddell, Dazel, and I tried to leave, but the monsters chased us. Once more, Zeddy grew quiet and she allowed her tears to fall again. Tessica hugged her tightly, but didn't pressure her to continue. She just waited. We were swarmed, and Dazel was hurt very badly. Riddell threw himself at the monsters and told me to get Dazel out of there. I wanted to stay and fight, but I knew that if I did, Dazel was going to die. I took her unconscious body, and we escaped into the jungle. The monsters still chased us. We eventually got away, but before we were able to make it to the nearest town, Dazel died. I'm so sorry you had to go through all that. I returned the body back to town, talked to each of their families, and then left town in shame. Never to return. <laughs> it should have been me who died. Dazel jumped in the way of a monster's attack, and that should have killed me. Tessica gently caressed Zeddy's face. Your friends gave their lives, so you could live. They loved you and cherished you just as much as you cherish them. They wouldn't want you to be drowning in misery like this. I know. I'm just so hurt. I miss them, and I just hope they could forgive me. Like, really forgive me. I'm sure they do. Can you forgive yourself? Yeah. It was a regret and a mistake, but you got out alive. Each day you smile is a day for both you and them. I don't know them, but I know how I'd feel if I were them. I'd want you to live and be happy, not be shackled to the past. I'm sure they feel the same. They'd be sad if they saw that you still carry this burden. I don't want to cause them any more grief. Then stop hurting yourself and allow yourself to heal over the past. Zeddy? You're allowed to forgive yourself. Zeddy hugged Tessica a little tighter. Do you want to watch the stars come out? <laughs> yes. Good. Then we will. And once we get back, I'll make you a really yummy dinner. Thank you. And in conclusion, because of the specified evidence listed above, I believe the mayor of Autumn Bliss to be compromised by demonic influence. Tomorrow, we will place mayor's right under divine inquisition questioning until this can be confirmed or denied. In the interim of such an investigation, as commander, I will occupy the city until order is restored here. I hope this letter finds you well. Sincerely, Sir Reth Jenklin. Reth placed the quill down and looked at the letter once more. He would need one of the squires to depart for Black Plains tomorrow, after a good night's rest. It was strangely quiet today, although in general this city was a quiet one. Reth got up and gazed out of the window to the streets below. Dozens of people were strolling on the streets. From the looks of it, about 60% of those he saw on the streets were locals, who probably called Autumn Bliss home. 
The others were armed and adorned with the usual trappings of professional adventurers. A smile creased Reth's face. Once upon a time, he had been one of those adventurers. Reth opened the window and peeked his head out. He frowned a moment later. The pair of paladins who were stationed at the front door were not at their posts. That was against protocol. A cold tickling danced up Reth's spine. It was dreadfully quiet. Reth turned around but then stopped as he beheld a woman standing in the doorway to his office. She was a half-fay woman dressed in the cleric robes of the obscure and possibly malevolent deity, Thefalgus. A pair of other clerics were behind her in the hall. Reth rounded the desk toward them. His weapon lay on the desk, but it was still within reach just in case something happened. Who are you, and why are you traipsing through our post? The woman raised her hand toward Reth, and suddenly her eyes and the holy symbol around her neck glowed with a sickly blue and black light. You will leave Autumn Bliss, and you will never return. My master will give you further instructions later. For but a moment, invisible and ethereal tendrils gripped Reth's mind. Gross warmth saturated his insides, and a bizarre numbness began stabbing into his fingers. And then Reth grunted loudly. All of the effects ceased as soon as they began. The clerics of the Falgus blinked several times, and then she narrowed her eyes. Reth stepped back and grabbed his axe, and then turned to face the woman, who had taken several more steps into the room. Who are you? How dare you try and enchant me? Two arms, my brethren! Two arms! There was only silence. The cleric smiled. What have you done to my paladin's vile creature? Your paladins have been sent back to the rest of your army to pass along their new orders. New orders? What new orders? <laughs> oh, I wouldn't worry about them. She turned to the other clerics beside her. This one seems to be the leader. I will handle him. Go ahead and ensure we won't be disturbed. Yes, High Priestess. The cleric, or rather the High Priestess, turned to Reth, her smile maintaining. You will find me most difficult to handle, villain. Oh, you might be. But that will be all the more fun. I'm impressed by you, Paladin Commander. No one else has been able to withstand the curse. Curse? Would you simply try to come on me? Yes, but embedded in that was a lovely little curse that will spread to all of your paladins at your new citadel. <laughs> you dare to attack the Divine Inquisition? You will fail. I'll slay you and then go and free my order. <laughs> I think not. You will find Thalvagas far more ancient and powerful than your young goddess. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Salaren, and I shall be your escort to oblivion! Reth readied his axe, but then the half fays body began glowing with a bright illumination. It was so intense that Reth had to turn his eyes away and squint. When he opened them, a horrific monstrosity lurched toward him. 